Good evening, everyone. System Chalk here with, uh, we should be on to the 114th episode of, um, Book of Hours playing as the artist. Now, um, my plan at the end of the last stream was to work out what my NUMA plan was going to be, and that's more or less happened, um, but I did need to, I, I got a little bit interrupted, so I needed to do a couple of things in between. So I've got part of the plan down, but not the full plan. <clears throat> so there's going to be a little bit that I need to catch up on, and that means that some of the planning is going to be in here. But the nice thing is that I get to, I kind of get to figure this out, you know, beside, uh, beside everyone, um, for better or worse, I suppose. Um, but I figure in this case, there's uh, an opportunity for me to explain my reasoning as I think it through. So, um, essentially what I'm dealing with right now is that I'm, I'm going to want to break up one of my level 3 skills uh, so that I can get the, the memories. Um, but I'm also going to want to make sure that I break them up in such a way that I'm going to be able to rebuild them without using up um, skills that I want to use in other places. So the target is Edicts Marshal. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use whatever surplus uh, lessons that I get to level up Edix Marshal. And that's going to mean that the first level up is going to require a moon or an edge and two memories. And then the next level up uh, to bring it to level four will require again a moon or an edge. But in this case it will require three. So in this case a very natural candidate would be the Arab. We can just sort of say these are already accounted for because these are going to be used for the Edicts Marshal. Then the next question might be okay well that's all well and good but where do the memories come from? Well the answer for that would be either we need to set aside five of these elements of the soul uh, or alternatively, what we do is we take a look at what Edicts Marshall will take, that's uh, Edge and Moon. So in that case, we would be able to use uh, Noom Broom and Old Wound, and then we would need to use three elements of the soul in order to, uh, to get the remaining um, memories. Although it is worth saying, <clears throat> you know, um, I'm not too worried about those particular memories because I can use any element of the soul for them. What gets tricky is that I'm going to need to find a um, one of these skills that I have three for that not only am I going to be able to break with one of the relevant memories, so uh, Snow Stories is actually a good candidate here for reasons that I'll explain in a little bit, <clears throat> um, but essentially I'm going to want to be able to break it with my existing elements of the soul, but I also want to be able to rebuild it. So for instance, Snow Stories, I can break it with the Wist, and I can restore it with the Trist. And then in order to level it up... Oh, sorry, my tea's done. Let me just try and rescue the tea bag before it... Uh, I do like it strong, but maybe not a half hour <laughs> broadcast strong. But yeah, so um, one option here would be we have the Wist and the Trist. So this would be how we break it up. And then the question is, how do we how do we get the the extra levels? And again, we kind of come back to the story of uh, what kinds of what kinds of memories do I need to generate? <clears throat> um, now, uh, this is the point where I actually resolve that, right? So, I'm thinking if we're going to level up Edicts Marshal, let's say that the old wound. Actually, you know what? Let's just say we're going to, um, yeah, let's say Noom Broom and Old Wound are spoken for. It would be kind of nice if I could somehow incorporate the lantern into this, but unfortunately I don't think there's a good way. So we've got the Wist and the Faust, but Glacier and Lightsmithing doesn't work. Actually, you know what? Here's the, here's the better way of doing this actually taking a look at the three. So Pentiments and Precursors, the scale is a deal breaker there. Same with Serpents and Venoms. Sights and Sensations is kind of tempting because of the winter in the sky, but it's actually the worst of both worlds. We only have one of each. We're going to need three. Uh, Snow Stories is the one we're currently considering. Considering Tradisma Hyra is kind of interesting right up until you consider that um, 
it winds up lining up with the things that we need for Edix Marshall, right? The moon and the edge. Uh, I suppose I can get the, uh, the edge with uh, metal as well. Um, which, again, I might consider, but um, I'm still going to need to use one of the Arab at some point. Um, Watchman's Paradox is the same problem as Glacier and Lightsmithing. It's Lantern and Sky. Aronoscopy, tempting. Um, effectively, there is the say. Actually, you know what? I might be convinced otherwise with Aronoscopy um, for the simple reason that we can use the Ascendant Harmony and the Didumos. Um... So I'm glad we did this. Uh, Rhyme and Remembrance. Yeah, really what I want to be focusing on is whatever will allow me to use uh, Insects and Nectars. Doesn't really have a place for the Ascendant Harmony or the Didumos. Um, okay, yeah. So Aronoscopy actually seems to be the right call here. So to go from... One to two. Maybe we give up the Ascendant Harmony for that. Sorry, what I'm doing right now is I'm I'm writing this. So let's say Aronoscopy, we drop with the Lantern. I'm just going to make a note here for lessons. So that's going to take us 30 seconds. <clears throat> then we go... Oh, one to two. And that's going to take a tryst. And that we'll use the Ascendant Harmony for. Oh, two to three. We use the tryst. Didumos. Um, Earth sign and sun's weakness are kind of write-offs. So for that, I would need um, sky or moon. Okay, from there, uh, we do Marshall 2 to 3. That takes an Arab. Um... And I suppose if we wanted, we could do the Noom Broom and Old Wound for that. But let's say we're going to use two memories, so we'll say that's a, a contradiction and a fear. And then Marshall 3 to 4. We'll use the Arab Plus. That will use um, the old wound um, noom broom and confounding parable okay so the reason why I wanted to write this out like this <clears throat> So I'm going to need to find an element of the soul for um, an element of the soul to be able to level up Oronoscopy one more time. I'm then going to meet, need two elements of the soul to be able to level up. Um, you know what? It was a little silly of me to use the core in retrospect. That's fine. We'll get over it. Um, okay. So from there. Um, with the um, Edix Marshall from 2 to 3, we would use the Contradiction and the Fear, so that would be the Metal and the Wisp spoken for. Um, actually, with that, we can say um, the Metal and the Fat. Wisp and the Fat, because Metal will give me an edge that I can work with. Okay, and then a Confounding Parable Yes, okay. So these are the elements of the soul that I am using to um, <clears throat> to generate memories. I'm actually going to get on those right away. 
Now, um, it is one of the reasons why I wanted to take the time to actually work this out is because I am still making the decision as to whether or not it makes any sense for me to try and break one of these level four ones. So for instance, if we had something like Oranoscopy um, at level four, there is a small argument that in order to get the, the greater number of lessons learned, which I can still use to augment um, higher levels, you know, maybe it would make sense for me to, um, you know, try and, and raise my ambitions a little bit more. Um, and there is a kernel of an argument for it. The thing that really sinks me is the idea of trying to find a combination of elements of the soul, particularly now that I've used up the core. I might have been able to use that if I didn't use the core at the Sweet Bones. But the big problem here is that um, trying to restore it back to level four is more than I can realistically expect. So I wanted to make sure that I, you know, I put the time in, <clears throat> excuse me, I made sure that I made sure that I actually really thought this stuff through and that I, I got it right. Um, but I think we're ready to go. So we're going to break up the Uranoscopy. That bright, brightness in the mist is at the sun. It might be unwise to gaze into it. You can choose to forget almost everything that you have learned of this skill, since you haven't yet committed it to the Tree of Wisdoms. You'll gain four many-faceted lessons, one fewer than you spent to get this far. For though much abides, something is always taken. Many-faceted lessons can be used to upgrade any skill, but always disappear at dawn. So, uh, we need something with sky or moon. Now, I guess the temptation here is that we've already got the storm uh, on its way. Yeah, so I guess we don't really need to give up an element of the soul for that. I'm glad I took a minute to think about it. Um, okay, cool. So let's, um, let's commit to the path. So what I need to do now is I need to occupy myself for the next 30 seconds, which is more or less going to happen as I try to level up um, Aranoscopy again. And what I need to do here is generate a contradiction of fear and a confounding parable, all of which is quite straightforward for me. Um, but again, I want to draw this from my existing resources. So let's start at Natan's desk with the FET. Um, I guess we can start with the fear. Let's do Seven Faces of Icarus. I've already mastered this, but I could reread it and perhaps recall a memory. Okay, next up, uh, Contradiction. I do like the Honey Book, but we did just read that one, so let's... Uh Do observations on the peacock door. Then I think we'll start uh, start from the beginning again. Okay, so that's fear and contradiction, and the last element that we will need is the confounding parable. And we'll get that using. I suppose I can use shout. And it's really we're spoiled for choice as far as this is concerned. We've got. Um, no no shortage of them. Let's actually um, let's do the moon's egg and then we'll move to the right. I've already mastered this, but I could reread it and perhaps recall a memory. Okay, so to my understanding, this should be every element of the soul that we need uh, in terms of sorry, like basically in terms of whatever um, whatever memories we're going to need to level up, all of this is spoken for, so I can use these uh, four however I would like. Um, now, with that in mind, you know, it wouldn't hurt for me to, to try and make the most of the, the day. Now, I am a little tempted to try the garden just to see if I get any, any of the weird marrows or something like that. Usually, it just winds up being... Um, just usual Numa stuff, but let's let's maybe try one of the core. The gardens and hush household plants with many virtues 
uh, for those with wisdom to recognize them. So let's see if it says anything about gather Numa, carrots, tomatoes, marrows, and blessed onions, all the unsung heroes of the stew pot. In Numa, they flourish fast, but there is something odd about their taste. So yeah, let's give this a shot. Now, the tricky question here is, with my health, do I want to try and collect um, the higher level honey? So we might have a chance to get the cuckoo honey, which we currently only have two of. Uh, or do we try and go for some of the items here? So we've got moly, we've got... I think this just gives us multiple uh, instances of uh, agave eterna. Um, I will verify that, actually. Yeah, more all the more plentiful enuma. So uh, we could get aglophotus, we could get moly... Um, I could get uh, miskissed water. I think I'm probably... The thing is, I don't really think I'm going to use the aglophotus, although I don't know if I have it right now, so maybe it's not a bad idea for me to collect it just so I have it. Okay, yeah, I kind of talked myself into it, I suppose. Um, I'm sure I'll find that I did have it, but... All right, gather a uh, Numa, Aglophotus, the other rose, only a Numa does it bloom. So I believe that is it in terms of my elements of the soul. Everything else is just kind of free at this point. Um, but I, I have a little bit of wriggle room if something doesn't go according to plan. The other thing I should mention is, and maybe I should have tried this ahead of time, Noombroom can be helpful in terms of just making stuff. But, um... Excuse me. Um... I, uh... I kind of... I kind of bungled that just because I didn't try the elements of the soul before I committed them. That's fine. We'll have other chances for experimentation. I'm, I'm pretty happy with where we're at. Lord Franklin Bancroft, Raquel, dilettante, infuriating prodigy, possibly dead, possibly real. Is there someone en route to Hush House? Okay, um, we already have the language we need. I've carried a memory like a flambeau safe through the mazes of night. matter of the feasting few in Numa, visitors will be concerned with questions of appetite, of blood, and of their attendant dangers. Thorough weather for this time of year. Definite weather. If there's an incident card active, you can discuss it or just leave the slot empty and offer a consultation. Now, I always kind of wonder, you know, we obviously, this is the same uh, Lord Franklin Bancroft that we've uh, seen other places. So I would normally imagine, you know, can I get you to sign the, can I get you to sign the, the diaries? But that does not seem to be an option here. So we'll talk about the feasting few. Conspiracy of roses. There are other appetites than love. So looks like this is a seven grail challenge. Understand the hungers they shared. Eternity's gift. An eternity is generous one. Not going to get anything out of that. All right, so we need to find a big, uh, big grail. And it's got a big, big grail in a language that he understands. All right. Snare of the tree is probably my best option here. Once we've begun, there's no end to it. Without the grail, no intercalate. Without the intercalate, how would the hours keep from... And here... You know what? I think I'm actually going to leave this aside. There's definitely some stuff I want to talk about in there, but we're uh, we're going to follow up on that later. Now, one small drawback. Actually, I can do part of this here. I do want to serve some of the aisle water. 
Serve appropriately. Pour out. All right, the skill is now level one. Use your many faceted lessons wisely. Light leaks in where, from, how. An unusually versatile lesson that will not persist past dawn. Use it quickly. All right, so now we implement the plan. Now, one thing I could do is just try and get the Faust back, but that is not our priority right now. Our priority is to uh, level Aronoscopy up to level... Um, level three. So for that, we're going to start with the storm. There's always more to learn. Improve the skill to level two. This will increase its aspects, which will help with crafting and make it suitable for higher branches in the Tree of Wisdoms if you haven't already committed it. So that's 30 seconds spoken for, which means the remaining texts will be able to do their thing. Pour it out. Right. The Moon's Egg, the third and last volume of the Meditations of Abbot Thomas of the Abbey of the Black Dove. Abbot Thomas speaks of the coming death he hears in the sound of the waves, but rejoices that his blood will water the egg of the moon, by which he seems to mean the future. The last chapter was dictated, not written, by Abbot Thomas. When Thomas's old sword brother Trigreve uh, returned to raid the Abbey, Thomas had broken his monastic oaths and taken up arms to defend the Abbey. The two had both been mortally wounded. Thomas's last words are, The wheel turns, the moon sleeps. The moth, the grail, the egg unhatching all tell different stories of the world's beginning. One of those stories is the oldest, but it may not be the first. We've got the Seven Faces of Igorus. In the early 1530s, the last abbot of St. Brendan's, called Roaring Richard, set down his conversations with the illiterate local cunning man, Red William. Red William describes the seven forms in which he goes about and under the world. Viper, cat, fox, eagle, dove, boar, and crow. Abbot Richard ingeniously fits all these into a framework of solar belief. According to Abbot Richard, each of Red William's forms is closer to the sun and is increasingly winged with virtue. Richard draws an analogy with the waxen wings of Icarus. Hypocrisy and false virtue will melt before the sun's heat, and so sincerity and untrammeled expression of the self are the utmost piety. It's worth noting that only a year or two after Richard wrote this book, John Tregonwell was so appalled by the debaucheries of the monks of St. Brendan's that he recommended the monastery's immediate dissolution. So there is the fear that we wanted. And observations on the Peacock Door. Nangala of Lagash discusses the Peacock Door, the highest door available to mortals in the Mansus, a rent, an imperfection, and abrasion. Notably, the book is written in Vag, which by some accounts is another aspect of the Peacock Door itself. Nangala addresses this by apologizing courteously to the door and the language at the end of every section. The Peacock Door did not exist, Nangala says, in the days when the gods from stone entered the Mansus. They used the fanged key to open the Savage Door, a door not usually available to mortals. Speech, as the initiates of Kion would have it, is a wound. I fear that through that wound the blood of the Mansus flows even now, and that one day speech will be an end to dream. I fear that, but I fear the alternative far more. Something uncomfortable. Okay, so this should say, this should mean that we're ready to go for all of the leveling that we need to do. We'll check in on that occasionally, but I think we should be fine. Uh, the Wist and the Metal are currently unaccounted for in terms of how I'm going to use them. I'm going to need to put some thought into that, but we do have the rest of the day to, to sort of think that through. Uh, the skill is now level 2. Its power aspects have also increased. All right, so... From here, we want to use the Trist to restore the Aronoscopy up to level 3. So we still have to use a, a many-faceted lesson. But here we use the Ascended Harmony and the Didumos, mostly just because I don't have any other use for the, um, for the sky. 
So I'm no expert, but I'm no dabbler either. Improve the skill to level three. So just as a reminder, the idea here is that I'm going to be leveling up Edict Marshal from th uh, two to three to four. So two and three, all of these have either uh, moon or edge, or for one of these, it actually has both. Now again, if I was so inclined, I could also say, well, let's just use the Noom Broom in some other uh, construction, but um, at this point here, I only have a metal and a whist to run with, so. All right, a silver spintria for our trouble. Occult uh, treasures are purchased with occult coin. Spintria, silver spintria are more valuable and usually display as scenes of debauchery on the reverse side. And of course, we'll be up the uh, spintria for our efforts at the sweet bones today. Okay, interesting things are going to happen in a couple seconds once we get our heart and core back. Okay, Aglophotus, the other room, uh, rose, only in Numa does it bloom. Now I know I had another storage for the flowers, I just don't remember where. I guess it was down here? We just wound up with a sack of vegetables for all that uh, work. Fair enough. Looks like I'm having some trouble finding a place to put those. Um, that's actually going to be a problem. We will resolve that later. Right now, I want to use the glass of water to bring my health back so that I can go to the bees. <clears throat> Okay. We'll probably only be able to do this once. Um, a quick nap uh, in a warm bed with something comforting to drink while the winds chase the clouds and the clouds chase the sun. What I'm going to do is I am going to serve another glass of water just in case. And let's see. I suspect this is it as far as... Oh, you know what? We'll probably be able to get another... Yeah. So the reason I, uh, I poured that now is just on the odd chance that I'm able to get a little bit more... Actually, no, I shouldn't, shouldn't have... Done it. I mean, it saves me from pouring it later, but there is no possible way I'm going to be able to restore this a second time. The skill is now level 3. Its power aspects have also increased. So I'm treating this like it's, you know, it, it's... A, a really delicate operation. This is one of the easier challenges for me to handle, if I'm if I'm going to be completely honest. Um, essentially, the um, there's a lot more time. You you can give you can break up um, much more powerful skills and still be able to make it through Numa. Uh, the limitation here is just the elements of the soul that I've made available for myself. Um, incidentally, so. I realize that my approach here is kind of unique in terms of what I'm willing to sort of give up as part of, um, uh, as part of, um, or not uh, give up, but basically the idea of putting the fewer elements inside of the Tree of Wisdoms, I realize that this is often sort of seen as a particular approach that I take, maybe not one that most people would take on. One of the advantages of that approach is that you do get to do stuff like this. You get a little bit more flexibility in terms of breaking up your skills. So again, I'm not trying to argue for my particular way of playing this game. I don't see any value in that, in doing that, to be perfectly frank. But um, I also do think that it's worth mentioning that, you know, this is an example of one of those things where, you know, given the way that I play, I do actually have a slight advantage towards pursuing a particular approach, um, whether it's worth the inconvenience of not having the elements of the soul and making them higher level ones, I don't know. Um, but there is there is a, a slight argument to be made for uh, the advantages that this gives. 
Okay, I do at least want to get through Numa, so this will probably be a little bit of a longer episode just because I spent um, more time talking than I had intended. But um, let's, uh, let's see the plan actually work out. We've more or less got everything that we expected out of Numa. We do know that we're going to have, um, we're going to get this back at the, the end of the season. Um, I've got my gold spin trio. We'll have a bit more after we're done the activity. And then we'll have the next season uh, begin, which means that we'll have another visitor who will either teach us a language or we'll get yet another spin trio from them. So tends to work pretty well. All right, the skill is now level three. Its power aspects have also increased. So one more level up. And again, we're focusing on Edict's Marshal because it gives me a lot of helpful, a lot of helpful things. Another fruit plucked from Knowledge's tree. Improve the skill to level four. And it is worth reflecting on. So what are some of the things that I could have done to make this easier for myself? Well, um, there's the metal and the whist. So if I found a way of incorporating that into the way that I would break up a, a particular um, set of elements of the soul. In fact, one thing that I might do if I find myself in a Numa again, I might break up Edict's Marshal and then just move forward with um, leveling it up the whole the whole way because I could do uh, Metal, the two Arab, <clears throat> and then the two Trist. So that would be uh, Metal two Arab, two Trist. Actually, yeah, I would have four level ups, but I could restore the metal with the glass of water at the very beginning. So that that might actually be something that I consider in the future. Um, but yeah, in any case, being able to level up Edict's Marshal gives me access to a few things. It does deny me a few others. Um, there are a number of things that would actually be quite good to level up, but I think Edict's Marshal, especially... Uh, how I intend to use the Wormwood Dream moving forward is not a bad um, not a bad place to go. And again, it's worth remembering we still haven't taken advantage of the uh, high quality followers that we can hire. The skill is now level four. Its power aspects have also increased. Okay, so we accomplished what we were looking to do. So this now means that the Whist and the Metal are at sort of open season for these. Um, now the big question is, is there actually anything I can do with them? Um, I don't think, I couldn't remember if it was Lantern and Sky or if it was just Sky. Um, so I don't think there's any role for the Winter and I'm near certain there's nothing for me to do Forge-wise with these. So I think we're just going to sit on our hands with um, Metal and Wist. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we could try something with uh, Lantern, I suppose. So we're definitely not reading a book. I mean, one thing I could try and do is read one of these books um, at the, uh, the end of the day. Yeah, there's a couple things I could have done differently, actually, to make this... Uh a better a better day but we will do our best with what we've got I deserved a little quiet time so uh, what we're gonna do here what we essentially want to try and do at this point is transform any elements of the soul we have available into things that we can get some kind of like permanent or tangible result from so it's useless for me to try and generate memories because memories are going to be going away at the end of the season. But trying to do something like generate honey, well, honey is something that will translate into... Um, honey's going to... Uh, that's going to translate into something that I can use permanently, basically. So gather Numa. In Numa, I might gather honey or beeswax or something unexpected. Okay, so the Whist and the Metal. Um, my best option here would be to take advantage of the Sun's weakness. Try and turn that into something lantern-y that I can work with. The thing is, I just don't remember... I mean, so the Archor Vitreus is not a hardship to put in. We don't have a ton of that. I guess we have one.
Yeah, it doesn't even take that much to make the use alt. Okay. I mean, I, I'm not opposed to making the Xanthotic Essence, but I feel like there's maybe something a little more exciting I can make with that. That's interesting. Um, Asherteen is kind of helpful in its own way. Um, I'm going to resist the urge, though. Looks like we always wind up in the same place, though. Okay. Well, um, <laughs> excuse me. Excuse me. Far be it from me to say no to more Icorvetrius. But I wonder if there's something more exciting that we can do with the metal. <laughs> Probably not. Um, so if I can find some liquid, which technically the, um, Isle Water would sa satisfy. Oh. Isle Water might satisfy it, but that doesn't mean that that's what I can put together. Um. I could try... Well, no. Um. There really isn't a good match for, for any of these things, so, um... I think the answer here is go for... I don't know, Xanthotic Essence seems pretty attractive to build. Um, It's just I might have, I might have bungled it by, uh... yeah, I just don't see a way of making the metal work here. Um... So that's fine. Um... Okay, hang on. Nope. Nuts. So I don't think there's a way that I can make this take a liquid. So that's not going to take the forge. I've already used up the alchemist set. Uh, kitchen's not quite going to do it because it won't take the metal. Um, I think, yeah, I think I, I played myself into a corner here. Um, unless I can come up with a clever way. Actually, there might be a way that I can get a lick. No. Um. Yeah, so, I mean... I do want to turn the metal into something, but um, I am a bit more constrained than I thought I was. So, um, probably still best for me to use the solar altar, so we'll stick these together. Um, 
And if I can do something lantern oriented. Again, this is the thing that's slightly maddening is that it really feels like there should be something that I can put in here. Um, but uh, it's pretty clear in terms of what its requirements are. So what I'm really looking for here is some kind of lantern thing that I can build. Uh, actually, weirdly enough, uh, the Icor Vitreus might be an option. Um, provided I can get it some kind of glass. Yeah, okay, fair enough. No such luck. Um, and then the Ashertine... I don't think it's possible because the Vitreus... Oh, the Vitreus is a pigment. Okay, well... I'd prefer the Uzalt, though. You know what? We're gonna make Uzalt. Or we would if I didn't give up. <laughs> That's on me, actually. So I used I used my most powerful skill. I could have made um, I could have made something much better, but I used uh, used up one of my skills. Okay, that's fine. Ashratine is not um, not terrible. Oh, actually, I'm still coming up short. Yep, the metal metal doesn't do the trick. Um, well, shoot. Okay. Um, I've really gone and done it now because it's like 10 minutes later than what I was planning on finishing. And uh, Well, the name day riddle is an interesting one, actually. I could technically turn that into something... Like, if I do that sufficiently late in the day, I lose the metal, but I'm able to get something else. I don't know. Let's um, let's not get too clever with this. Let's see if we can turn this into some kind of an ink. Um, ink some containment. Uh, Catwink if I have to, I suppose. It feels like there should be something better that I can get out of this. You know what? Let's not spend too much. I don't even need to use the sun's weaknesses for this, actually. Yeah, let's not spend too much time uh, thinking about this. So yeah, the, a couple th a couple things I definitely should have done differently this time around, but you know what? It's, um... It is what it is, and I'm... It's not like I... It's not like I'm walking away without something helpful, right? I've got the... Uh, I've got the Aglophotus. We might be getting the Cuckoo Honey. We've got Edict's Marshal at a higher level than what it would normally be. Um, and all that we've really given up for it is a pitcher of water. <clears throat> and uh, we're going to be down an element of the soul. Um, on top of that, so I'll save this for another entry, but we've got the Mazed Cell. So that uh, takes quite a bit of Grail. Um, well, Grail or Moth, but remember that we have the Sun's Weakness here, as well as Ruby Wise Ruin and a couple of other things to push uh, push our advantage. So this shouldn't be that hard for Mrs. Kill to handle. On top of that, we've got the Stifling Chamber with Forge or Winter, so we should also be able to make uh, some progress there. Dark and Pungent. This might help me out with some of the uh, Moon Texts. So yeah, I would have liked to have um, used my skills a little bit better for some of these others, but that's probably the biggest, um, <clears throat> or maybe even the only regret of Numa. I suppose also a little bit of um, lesson farming with the 
the various uh, objects that we'd find in Numa. But again, it's not the sort of thing I want to kick up a fuss about. We'll we'll be able to to get through all of it. Uh, in Numa, I might gather honey, beeswax, or something unexpected. So we've got the hive's lament. Now, if I can carry this overnight, I'm going to try. I just don't remember if it'll take Mott. It will. Okay, so... Um, technically, I could do that with the Earth sign and the sun's weakness, but the hive's lament is actually more difficult for me to keep. So that is a rather nice thing for me to finish off with. Again, it would have been better to have something more tangible in the form of the cuckoo honey, but the hive's lament is something that I'm going to be able to keep. Night has fallen, dawn will come soon. Dream on a memory. Now that night has fallen, I can rest and perhaps dream on the day's doings. And that, uh, I know it's a an extended stream. Uh, my apologies, I got a little little bit inside my head, but that's a pretty decent Numa for us, I'd say. Uh, like I said, we're going to be up the uh, Spintria for the work that we're doing, and as well as anything that will come at the beginning of the season. We've got three more books to deal with. We've got a couple of obvious places to go inside of the jail on top of what we'll be exploring in the caves down below. Um, I think we, even if we don't touch these books, uh, in fact, even if we don't touch these books, I think we have some really clear ideas about what we want to do for the next little while. Um, so I am certainly looking forward to it. But above all, I'm looking forward to sharing what we find in this room, which I figure is a decent one. Um, start Wednesday's, uh, or sorry, uh, Thursday's broadcast on. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in tomorrow's episode. Take care.